Now the DLP systems, uh, there are a couple of restrictions that it has, that the scope of the DLP system is within the enterprise. Right? So a DLP system will control the movement of data within the enterprise, but it will not control the information when it's, once it leaves the enterprise perimeters. It goes to customers, it goes to partners, other kind of uh, external entities. The second thing is that the DLP system, while it gives provide access control, who should have access and who should not, does not get into details like who can have print access and who can have edit access and who can have uh, you know time based access and so on. The IRM system however extends its reach within and outside of the enterprise. So if an enterprise of a piece of confidential information is traveling within the enterprise or outside to lawyers, auditors, vendors and so on, then the need for an IRM system becomes very obvious. Now once you combine these systems what you get is a method by which you can centrally define distribution and usage control policies. So you can define which pieces of data are supposed to be resident within which uh, computers within the enterprise and then also to be able to define where all is it supposed to go, who all can view it and extend the scope of these policies outside of the enterprise. When data is to business partners and you know auditors and so on. The way the bundle product works for the customer is that the customer is able to centrally define within one system the rules for data discovery. So the customer for example if it's a financial institution can define for example that any document containing 16 digit continuous numbers is credit card data. Right. Now associated with this credit card data, he can define that if whenever there is a credit card data, prevent this data from being uploaded on the internet or being sent via email to anybody outside of the enterprise and so on, which are all DLP distribution control rules. Within the same interface, he can also define that as soon as a credit card data is discovered, to automatically apply some usage control policies. So for example, a credit card data cannot be um, printed and beyond seven days at a operator's uh, desktop, it should self-destruct, right? Also, if for whatever reason, credit card data, let's say, is being sent to external agencies, let's say the financial institution is sending this credit card data to the credit card fabricator, right? Then it can say that after five days of this data being sent, that data should self-destruct or become unavailable even to the fabricator. Right. So all of this within a central uh, framework where the policies are defined, monitored and uh, audited. One of the biggest challenge, challenge that the enterprises have in uh, large enterprises have in cloud adoption is what happens to my data. Right. And there are a lot of questions which spring up, right? like what happens if the if I need to change vendors? What happens if the vendor shuts down the service? What happens if the set data center goes down and so on, right? It, the, all the questions finally come back to the amount of control that can be exercised on data once the cloud service provider has access to it, right? The way IRM technology deals with this issue is that because IRM, Secular File Secure for example is an IRM technology, so the way Secular File Secure deals with this situation is that it builds the control rules within the data itself. So now it doesn't matter where the data is stored, it doesn't matter how it is being utilized, and how you know where it is being transmitted, but the control policies are within the data itself. Right? So it enables cloud service providers to ensure that information is used as per the client's policies and rules and not dependent on individual infrastructures. Wherever there is uh, devices which are other than the standard desktops and laptops and nowadays the definition of devices itself, so there are mobile phones, then there are um, 
the, the iPads of the world, uh, tablet PCs, uh, then there is um, the atom based things, right, netbooks. Uh, and then there are all kinds of devices in the middle, right, which are borderline devices and so on. So, implementing any control or implementing any restriction on the method of access of a device itself is going to become very quickly um, uh, unusable. Right? If you say that my system is only available on the desktop and not on, for example, a phone or a tablet and so on, then enterprises are going to very quickly pick it up and throw it away. Right? So any technology, and Seclor is again following uh, following similar strategy, where Seclor, what Seclor is doing is, number one, using the device as an authentication medium. Right? So users can be identified based on the device that they are accessing a particular system or a document from. Right? The second thing is using the device as an access medium. So users can actually use a device and access confidential documents, emails, and so on. The third is using the device as a um, method to collaborate beyond the network. So for example, if these devices are being accessed within the enterprise, but they are also personal devices which might be using the same systems and uh, applications and data and so on. So making sure that this data is secured whenever this, this data is traveling across public networks, public devices and so on. So specifically for Seclore, the way we are, uh, the way we are looking at the mobile space is that we are making our system available to more and more devices as methods of identification and methods of access and making sure that secure documents remain secure when they travel to these devices.